it raises a really good point that your your body has inherent wisdom. Your body is meant to be balanced. And if you're out of balance, it's probably because you're not noticing it. So to watch yourself in a mirror, to watch yourself on video, I remember the first time I saw myself playing on video and I was horrified. It's very, very eye-opening. And this was a huge revelation to me. After I've been playing for a few years and I remember struggling with things and certain things I've practiced for months and months and months and couldn't get it. And I remember my teacher saying to me, just do it this way. The only difference was a thought. And suddenly, it was better. And I realized, here I am, struggling with this thing and thinking, I can't get it because I'm not good enough yet. But it wasn't that. It was that I couldn't get it because I just wasn't going about it in the right way, because the mechanics of it were awkward. If it feels awkward, there's a very good chance that it is. There's a very good chance that there's a better way to do it. And so doing something like looking in a mirror, like watching yourself on video, you will see those things. You start to become aware of it. And what all great players, or I shouldn't say all, because there are people that just have tremendous natural ability, and they just do it. And they're not really thinking about what they do. They just do it. Again, those are the very gifted people that we try to admire and not resent. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hendricks would was slaughtering a cow when, when he played. You know, yeah. he was just... Mania it looked like a Max murder, you know, but he, he it, would, it came out that way. Yeah, he, he, well, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, the same thing. They would attack the guitar, almost, but it's just this intensity of energy that was pouring through them. But they're still relaxed enough to allow for that flow, for allow, to allow for that to happen. And that's a huge thing to keep in mind. And that's, again, getting back to that slow practice idea. If you're not able to control it, then you slow down to the point where you can. You slow down to the point where you do see and feel the difference between when it's fluid and when it's not. And it's amazing how much of a change you can make almost instantaneously just by seeing it. And what it really comes down to, what I'm starting to say, is that most really good players are very aware of what they're doing. If you've spent a lot of time with a guitar in your hands, then you have learned a lot about how you're actually producing those sounds. And you may have had the same experience that I had. When I started teaching, I learned so much about what I was actually doing because I had to explain it to somebody. You had to find a way to put it into words. And there are people who teach by, well, it goes like this. And then there are people who teach by, here's what you do. And it all depends, what's best for you also depends on your learning style. Some people just need to be shown and that's what it is. And some people need to have it broken down verbally and some people need to see diagrams. We all learn in different ways. But that awareness, just that on a deeper level than you might ordinarily, looking at and seeing and feeling what you're doing and hearing it for that matter hearing the difference like we talked about before between that sound and that sound and the increase in the resonance when you just let that arm swing so let's talk about some different kind of grooves say for example the old favorite train beat They call it a train beat because your drummer notice the back beat accent. But at the same time, you think of, say for example, almost any Johnny Cash tune of the earlier eras in particular, and you have that boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka. -boom -chicka. Well, the boom is the bass. And chicka
Now, you will notice that I am muting the strings a little bit. I'm not allowing them to ring out because I'm resting this part of my right hand on the strings. And this is a technique that takes some practice if you're not accustomed to it. But basically the idea is you're still getting sound. You're still hearing the chord. How are you not easing your shoulder when you're doing that? So you're stopping it, you're stopping it with what? That. So this is sort of the exception to what I was saying before about how you don't generally use your wrist to strum because by anchoring the right hand, I lose the ability to do this. So there's really no other way to make that sound other than to move the wrist side to side. But what's happening is the heel of my hand is sitting at the base of the strings. And so instead of ringing out, because here's without muting. And when Denny gives his finger style class this afternoon, when you talk about the Chet Atkins style and the importance of that mute on the bass note, you're going to see how essential that is to particular styles of playing. But you can simulate this or you can experiment with it even just muting out all your strings. Back to that hi hat. Notice on boom, on the bass note, there's that move out away from the strings so that you're not striking everything else. And then that swing of the hand. See if you can do it at about this speed. And just be conscious of separating between aiming for that thickest bass string Up speed. Now we need a harmonica. There you go. And again, very heavy on the backbeat. Yeah. 